Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we'll explore The Dip by Seth Godin, a revolutionary book that delves into the concept of knowing when to stick with a project and when to quit. Join us as we uncover the key principles and insights from this thought-provoking read. So, let's dive into the summary of this incredible book. But before we dive into the content, I kindly request a moment of your time to appreciate this video by liking it, subscribing to the channel, and ringing that notification bell. Your support means a lot to me. Thank you so much. The dip is a metaphorical representation of the different stages we encounter in any venture we undertake. According to Godin, every journey starts with enthusiasm and excitement, but eventually, we hit a point where progress stalls and the going gets tough. This is what he refers to as the dip. Godin argues that the dip is a natural part of the path to success and it's crucial for individuals to recognize whether they are in a temporary setback or a dead end. By identifying the dip early on, one can make an informed decision on whether to power through or pivot to something more promising. One of the key takeaways from the dip is the importance of strategic quitting. Godin emphasizes that quitting isn't always a sign of weakness, but can be a strategic move to conserve resources and refocus efforts on more rewarding pursuits. Knowing when to quit can save time, energy, and resources that can be better utilized elsewhere. Moreover, the dip highlights the significance of being the best in the world at what you do. Godin posits that mediocrity is a crowded space, and to truly stand out and achieve success, one must strive for excellence and be willing to push through the dip when others give up. Throughout the book, Godin offers practical advice and strategies for navigating the dip, such as focusing on what truly matters seeking feedback, and staying committed to your goals. By embracing the dip as a natural part of the journey, individuals can overcome challenges and emerge stronger and more resilient. The Dip by Seth Godin explains why quitting when it comes to a dead end may be a good decision. It teaches how to identify the dip and either push through or quit to focus on other opportunities. The Dip is about the common struggle we all face when we undertake an ambitious project or embark on a new career. As author Seth Godin points out, we can greatly increase our chances of success by preparing for the inevitable dip into difficult and trying times. By making tough choices, avoiding distractions and setting priorities, you can be well-equipped to persevere and come out stronger than you were before. Seth Godin is a writer, entrepreneur, and educator. He is the creator of Seth's Blog, a popular online destination filled with advice on marketing, work values, and team building. He is the author of numerous best-selling books, including Lynchpin, Are You Indispensable? Tribes, We Need You to Lead Us, and Purple Cow, Transform Your Business by Being Remarkable. The Dip by Seth Godin is a captivating book that explores the concept of strategic quitting and knowing when to push through challenges or walk away. Here's why this book is worth reading. Packed with practical wisdom, it provides a roadmap for success by teaching readers how to identify and navigate through the inevitable periods of stagnation. Godin's no-nonsense approach and straight-to-the-point writing style is refreshing, making the book a quick and easy read without sacrificing depth or impact. With its thought-provoking insights and real-life examples, the book challenges conventional wisdom and encourages readers to evaluate their goals and priorities in a new light. Here is a sentence showcasing the greatness of a quote of this incredible book. It's easy to be a CEO. What's hard is getting there. There's a huge dip along the way. Seth Godin. The dip teaches us that, between starting and succeeding, there's a time of struggle when we should either pursue excellence or quit strategically while helping us choose between the two. Let's suppose you start to do figure skating. Pretty soon you'll be able to glide on the ice very fast. And it'll be fun. But when it comes to learning how to jump, you'll need to put in never-ending workouts and countless attempts. This part of learning something new is called the dip. In author Seth Godin's words, the dip is the long, slow slog between starting and mastery. A long slog that's actually a shortcut because it gets you where you want to go faster than any other path. You may experience it whenever you create a new business, especially if it's an innovative one. In the beginning, you are in love with your project, excited and full of ideas. Then many problems will emerge one after the other and you'll have to figure out how to solve them. In The Dip, a little book that teaches you when to quit and when to stick, Seth Godin explains that this is the stage when people are most likely to quit. And many times this is the right choice. 
Only the ones who push harder and manage to overcome the dip can accomplish their goals. Here are three lessons I learned about persistence, excellence, and giving up at the right time. Whatever your goal, you'll need to confront a dip to succeed. The rewards for being first are huge and even unexpected. Aim for them. If you want to be a winner in the long run, you'll have to master the art of smart quitting. Knowing the dip before you find yourself in it will help you get through. Learn how to withstand this time of struggle or rather strategically quit. Lesson 1. Whatever goal you want to achieve, you'll have to survive a dip in order to reach mastery. Whatever endeavor you undertake, small and big struggles are waiting for you hidden behind the initial excitement. Unfortunately, facing them is the only way to realize yourself. In fact, Avoiding such hardness by doing only easy things won't get you very far, and it's even risky. For example, if you worked at a retail store and only had to refill the shelves, you'd be easily replaceable. Instead, if you become the best at handling difficult customers, you'll be precious for the company you work for. To overcome the dip, you need to embrace increasingly hard challenges. It's like in bodybuilding. To grow more muscles, you have to lift up heavier and heavier weights. That's why bodybuilders always try to push their limits further. Think of your personal development as a muscle. No pain, no gain. Emerging from the dip also implies perseverance. When you start to build a new business, be prepared to struggle for years. Today, people wait for new products to be reviewed as high-quality ones before spending their precious money on them. Hence, even if you created the most fabulous product, you can be required to spend a very long time in the dip of getting enough customers. While in school we had to be quite good at many things, in the post-school world it's better to be excellent at one thing. When looking for an accountant, people don't care if he can also play the piano. They just want him to provide a great service. Specializing is essential for you to withstand the dips you may face in your life. Lesson 2. Being the best is so much better than just being good. According to the International Ice Cream Association, vanilla is the most popular ice cream flavor and chocolate is the second. Well, vanilla accounts for almost 30% of all ice cream sales in the U.S. while chocolate only for about 10%. A big difference in results between first and second is very common, it's called Zip's Law. This means being the very best at what you do will bring you much higher profits than being second or one of the best. Our society likes winners. People don't want to waste their time and are always looking for the best movies to watch, the best places to eat and so on. If you are in a new place and ask locals for a typical restaurant, they will probably send you to the most famous one in town. As a result, the majority of tourists are likely to eat in the very same place. But having many more customers than their competitors isn't the only advantage of being first. They can also charge higher prices. Because people know they're worth it. They are the best. Lesson 3. Identifying the right moment to give up is crucial for your success in life. Failing is not a choice but the only option you have left once you've used up all your resources. Instead, smart quitting is not failing, it's a way of avoiding failure. Smart quitting is a conscious decision based on what it takes to invest further to emerge from the dip, a choice among more options available to you. Sometimes quitting is the wisest thing to do. In many cases, you only have two options being exceptional or quitting. If you realize you are significantly over-investing time and money to be the first in your market, you should consider shifting from your niche to another one. If you are thinking of quitting, here are three questions you should ask yourself. Am I panicking? If you are, this is the worst moment for you to decide, so wait until you can think straight. Who am I trying to influence? If it's just one potential customer who's not interested, you'd rather quit. But if it's a whole market, you should probably persist. In fact, conquering a market is a hill you need to climb in any kind of business. What sort of measurable progress am I making? Your steps to success may be small, but you need to proceed. Try to understand if you are moving forward, standing still, or worse, falling behind. Good quitters state in advance when to quit by setting goals and deadlines. This allows them to know if it's time to renounce or to work harder. We can't do everything, can we? Achievement comes from quitting something to free up time and energy for what we consider more effective. In the dip, Seth Godin helps us to see the difference between giving up because it's easier and giving up because it's wiser. 
Those are the individuals who truly deserve to immerse themselves in this extraordinary book. The 23-year-old who is thinking of dropping out of college. The 35-year-old who wants to start his own business. And anyone who's about to undertake a new challenge. Entrepreneurs. Ambitious people. People who have trouble finishing projects. Let's continue exploring the additional key takeaways of the book to gain further insights and knowledge. In today's competitive landscape, the path to true excellence and unparalleled success is often marked by a challenging stretch referred to as the dip. This grueling yet critical period serves as a refining process that separates those willing to endure hardships from those who falter under adversity. In the dip, Seth Godin examines this transformative phase providing insights into navigating it effectively. Godin expounds on the necessity of persisting through the dip to achieve genuine success. He introduces strategies for discerning when to persist, when to let go, and when to redirect efforts towards more fruitful pursuits. Ultimately, Godin offers a roadmap for honing your focus and committing resources to become the undisputed leader in your chosen field. Quitting becomes progressively more challenging and distressing over time in scenarios that can be described as cliffs, and these should be completely steered clear of. Persisting in addictive behaviors typically leads to an increased difficulty in abandoning them. The escalating challenge of abandoning a difficult situation can ensnare individuals in circumstances that are less than ideal, presenting a perilous route to steer clear of. Identifying a pivotal moment quickly demonstrates both wisdom and bravery. The habit-forming characteristics of tobacco illustrate that the fleeting satisfaction it offers intensifies the difficulty of cessation as time progresses. Determining the appropriate moment to cease efforts or to continue persevering hinges on a thorough assessment of the rewards that may lie ahead on the chosen trajectory. Choosing to abandon a particular journey ought to be decided upon without regard to momentary discomfort, as the long-term benefits of perseverance often outweigh initial hardships. Opting to cease should stem from a calculated strategic choice, rather than an impulsive reaction to immediate obstacles. Victorious individuals often make the tactical choice to discontinue their efforts, setting specific benchmarks that dictate the appropriate circumstances for cessation. Determining whether to persist involves assessing if you possess the required resources and resolve to endure the tough phase that comes before success. Deciding To halt one's endeavors upon encountering an impasse or to avoid an impending catastrophe is frequently seen as a wise decision. Identify the precise circumstances and moments when it's appropriate to cease your endeavors and resolutely adhere to that choice. Individuals or organizations aiming to integrate the principle of discontinuation into their strategy need to establish a definitive plan to identify the optimal timing for such a decision. Are you slowly surrendering by not striving for excellence? Victorious individuals understand that enduring hardship now can prevent greater distress later on. Developing a strategic approach to identify the appropriate time to end specific pursuits can assist you in managing challenging times and aid you in stopping efforts that are disadvantageous, while maintaining those that are essential. Excel in your field by achieving the highest global standard. In the current environment of intense competition, securing the top position in a selected domain or industry offers unmatched advantages and prospects. The following are insights into the significant advantages of holding the top position and strategies to reach that apex. The greatest benefits are reaped by individuals who achieve the leading status in their respective field or market. Leaders enjoy vastly disproportionate benefits compared to those in second place or lower. In every sector, the person at the pinnacle reaps rewards substantially greater than their peers, with the top performer often earning 10 times more than the one ranked 10th and 100 times more than the person in the 100th spot. Those who lead the pack enjoy rewards that escalate exponentially, signifying that the benefits significantly amplify for these frontrunners. Jack Welch's strategy at GE underscored the necessity of aiming for market dominance or securing a position as a strong second, underscoring the concept that scarcity increases worth at the top tier swaying both individual customers and companies to pursue the top options. Reaching the summit enhances worth as both consumers and employers favor the premier option. Heading a company listed in the Fortune 500 provides significant perks, including substantial sway in the industry and sizable financial rewards. 
The publication posits that the difficult period often referred to as the dip is essential as it maintains the rarity of achieving top-tier success. The elite performers in any domain enjoy the advantages of their top status, sharing these rewards with a select few colleagues. To ascend to the pinnacle of your field, you must make difficult decisions, which often involves abandoning paths with dimmer prospects. Diversifying efforts dilutes resources and prevents achieving true mastery. Striving for excellence necessitates difficult decisions, such as abandoning paths with dimmer prospects. Striving to achieve unmatched global excellence across multiple domains presents a formidable challenge. Diversifying efforts dilutes resources and prevents achieving true mastery. The most successful individuals concentrate intensely on their most viable route, committing substantial resources to surmount their specific challenges and emerge as frontrunners. Focusing intently and committing assets toward the most beneficial path is essential for achieving the highest level of success. To secure a top spot within a specific market, substantial investment in both time and resources is essential. To truly stand out, it's not enough to outperform 98% of your competitors. You must strive to become the unparalleled leader in your field. One should periodically evaluate and discard strategies that fail to deliver outcomes, redirecting focus to methods that generate the intended results, while keeping a steady overarching plan. The writer posits that steadfast dedication to achieving excellence is a characteristic of those who attain genuine success, a trait that propelled organizations such as Microsoft to surmount numerous challenges and secure a dominant position in their sector. In summary, those who have attained the summit of their specific fields often experience the most substantial rewards that life can provide. Navigating to a top position globally necessitates tough choices, including discerning the right moment to abandon unfruitful initiatives and focus on the most crucial tasks. True leaders stand out by maintaining an unwavering commitment to excellence. The dip represents a challenging phase in the journey towards success where efforts may not yield immediate rewards. It is a period of sustained effort and perseverance that tests one's commitment to their goals. Navigating successfully through the dip is crucial for achieving excellence as it separates those who persevere from those who give up prematurely. Understanding and enduring, the dip can lead to unique benefits and set individuals apart in their chosen fields. A cul-de-sac is a dead-end street that leads to nowhere, symbolizing a path that doesn't offer progress or advancement. In the context of decision-making, it represents scenarios where additional effort doesn't lead to significant results, prompting the need to redirect focus. On the other hand, a cliff signifies a situation where persisting becomes increasingly challenging and distressing over time, akin to a dangerous drop-off point that should be avoided. These metaphors highlight the importance of recognizing unproductive paths and making strategic decisions to either redirect efforts or discontinue them for better opportunities. Strategic quitting involves making calculated decisions to stop pursuing endeavors that do not lead to significant outcomes. Recognizing dead ends means identifying situations where further effort does not result. The concept of the dip may not universally apply to all fields or endeavors. Some paths to success may not involve a significant downturn or challenging phase. The idea that adversity should always be welcomed as an ally may not account for situations where the adversity faced is a sign of a mismatch between the individual skills and the chosen endeavor. The notion that quitting is essential when facing dead ends may overlook the potential for innovation or pivoting that could turn a seeming dead end into a new individual. As the old song goes, you gotta know when to hold M and know when to fold M. While this may be a reference to playing poker, it's also pretty good advice on how to get by in the business world or with any personal project. You have to know when to keep going and when to cut your losses. No matter your calling in life, there's a good chance you'll hit a rough patch where things aren't going as planned and progress is at a frustrating standstill. Many of us have watched as colleagues get promoted ahead of us. Sales figures plateau, relationships grow cold or felt like our work is getting worse rather than better. In the words of author Seth Godin, this difficult time is known as the dip and it can be found in just about every facet of life. But don't despair. Even though the dip is virtually unavoidable, there is often light at the end of the tunnel. Those who show patience and determination will be rewarded when growing pains come to an end and promotions, 
customers and relationships take a turn for the better. As Godin points out, the dip is just a natural progression for any endeavor and by being prepared for it, you'll be better suited to succeed. In these insights, you'll find out how the dip can be used as a helpful tool. M. How the dip has benefited giants like Microsoft and why you should stop worrying and learn to love the dip. 1. Whatever your aim, you will experience a dip or a period of struggle. Let's say you want to master figure skating. Learning how to gracefully glide across the ice and even skate backward can happen pretty quickly. But learning how to land a perfect quadruple jump will take a great deal of time and strenuous effort before you can perfect it. This is the time when you're struggling deep in the dip. The same experience can happen when you're bringing a new business to life. At first, it'll be smooth sailing as you fall in love with your exciting and innovative ideas. But then there's the inevitable mountains of paperwork to overcome and figuring out how to solve the many problems that will arise during the early stages. Chances are, it'll be years before the dip is over and you're comfortably running a successful business. Sometimes the dip can be purposefully built into a process as a way of finding out who the most dedicated and hardworking people are. Imagine you're a student in the U.S. thinking of going to medical school. One of your mandatory classes in the first year will be organic chemistry, a fiendishly difficult subject that will eat up a great deal of your study time. While organic chemistry isn't the most important class in the curriculum, it creates a dip that causes many students to throw in the towel early on. A lot of people entertain the idea of becoming a doctor, so creating a dip early on is an easy way for universities to reduce the class size to only the most dedicated students. A similar strategy is used in the hiring processes of companies around the world. In order to whittle down the applicant pool to only the best talents, many job applications require an excessive amount of documentation and include multiple rounds of stressful interviews. The good news is, by recognizing these dips for what they are, you can find comfort in the knowledge that they're supposed to be difficult and that it will get easier if you just stick with it. Two, being the best comes with big rewards, as well as some less obvious perks. When you were growing up, there's a very good chance you were taught to have modest, realistic goals rather than bold, grand ambitions. The truth is that if you aim for being the best at what you do, the rewards can be phenomenal. 3. In order to succeed, it is important to specialize and learn how to quit strategically. The average grade school experience is about getting an all-around general education, with rewards tending to go to the students who get good marks in every subject. But in the post-school world, being good at everything isn't as important as being at the top of your class in one important subject. In other words, success is about specializing in something. For you will face a dip in any business or personal endeavor. As the saying goes, knowing is half the battle. And knowing that a dip is on the way is an important insight that gives you time to plan ahead and to familiarize yourself with what your particular dip will look like. Since every type of business has its own dip, let's take a look at some of the most common ones, starting with manufacturing. 5. Success comes from embracing the challenge of the dip and pushing yourself to your limits. If it wasn't for the unpredictable nature of the wind, windsurfing would probably be pretty easy. In fact, many people are drawn to windsurfing and experience an initial thrill, but then end up cursing the wind and giving up what at first seems like a fun hobby. But despite the difficulties it may occasionally bring, you obviously can't windsurf without wind. In fact, the wind is the best part, which brings us to the key in withstanding the dip, embracing the challenge. Six. Competitors will use the dip to their advantage, while surviving the dip will make you rise above mediocrity. Competition is rarely a pleasant business. Dealings with competitors can be full of treachery and resentment. Often, one of the primary motivations of a competitor is to lengthen your time in the dip. Specifically, an established competitor will create a marketplace that makes it very hard for you to gain a foothold. 7. To withstand the dip, you need to develop grit and patience. If you've ever been stuck in a long line at the supermarket, you know how tempting it can be to switch to another checkout lane in the hopes of getting out a little bit quicker. But there's always a chance that once you switch to the other line, that first one will start to speed up and you'll end up waiting longer than you would have in the first place. This supermarket scenario can be applied to careers and personal projects too. If something seems to be slowing down or stalled, 
You may be tempted to move everything over to a new endeavor, but what's really needed is patience and grit, otherwise known as determination. When times are tough, don't abandon the experience you've gained and make sure you explore all options. While it's undoubtedly beneficial to have grit, it's nevertheless wise to know when to cut your losses and quit a project that's clearly falling apart. But there's also a smart way to both quit and simultaneously stick with your chosen field. When something is clearly not working, there's no sense in letting it continue to drain your time, energy, and resources. But that doesn't mean you should quit the market that you've grown familiar with and gained experience within. Doing so would just be yet another waste of your time, energy, and resources. In conclusion, The Dip by Seth Godin is a must-read for anyone looking to understand the ebbs and flows of success and when to persevere or move on. Whether you're an entrepreneur, creative professional, or simply navigating your personal journey, This book offers invaluable insights that can help you navigate the dip and reach your full potential. You can find the link to acquire a copy of this incredible book in the description below. Thank you for joining us for this summary and analysis of The Dip by Seth Godin. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you found this book summary helpful, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more book summaries and insightful content. And share this uplifting summary with someone who may benefit from hearing them. Leave a comment down below if you've read this book or have any other recommendations for us. And also don't forget to explore our curated playlists of book summaries covering various topics. Until next time, keep pushing through the dip and striving for greatness.